I want to ask you, Gordon, how many restaurants are you operating now? Is it eight, nine, ten? Uh, Twelve. Twelve all told. Twelve, yeah. How, I mean, no matter how much energy you have, yeah. and you are, it seems indefatigable in that sense, mm -hmm. you, you must be spreading yourself thin at this yeah. stage. Yeah, I mean, that's the sort of British, you know, ethos. You know, the bigger you get, then the weaker you become. But, you know, Mark, we've got 1,300 members of staff. Um, Paul Carroll is my chef at um, the Ritz. Um, Carlton, he's been with me for five years. He's a Dublin boy. I'd never set up a project unless I had the infrastructure to back it. Mm. And if you think of, you know, Paul Carroll, 26 years of age, Irish, phenomenal talent, uh, you know, all I want to do now is expose him. In the wings, there's another dozen that we've been training for the last 10 years. So it's not me. It's not all me. Yes, it's under the umbrella. But, you know, I'm over it like a rash uh, at Powers Court. And, you know, if you went and spent, you know, uh, 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds on an Armani suit tomorrow, uh, you wouldn't ask if it was Giorgio who stitched it. You'd pay for the quality, and that's exactly mm. what we're delivering. That's hard, though, because I'm a control freak, so I want everything absolutely perfect. So um, there's a chef uh, called Alain Lucas in Paris mm. who has three three stars across the world, from New York to Paris to Monaco. So if he can do it, then why can't you know, the British do it? So, I mean, we, we evolve. We don't stand still. We move. And you know, I was always been taught to work as hard as I can, as young as I can. It is one of the things about, about, about the great chefs, because they're, they're, you know, they have to have their artists, they have to have this great ego, this great passion, this yeah. great drive. But part of being a great chef is paying it forward, because it doesn't matter how great you are, you've got to find another one to follow yeah. on so that they will follow your standards yeah. or keep your standards up. It's yeah. quite, it's in one sense incredibly selfish and in, yeah. in another sense incredibly giving. No, that's a good point. I mean, listen, you know, cooking's a very selfish thing. You have this sort of um, amazing amount of talent inside and you don't want to give it to anybody, mm. but the quicker you realise by passing on, the better you become and they become. And, you know, I've never been selfish with talent. I've always exposed that uh, level of uh, talent. But, you know, it's a phenomenal job to have. It's a passion. It's never become a job. You don't go into cooking to become famous. You go into it because you're excited about evolving and that level of pressure. But pressure's healthy. It only mm. becomes stressful when you can't handle that pressure. So um, I don't want to stand still. And Gordon, everything at the moment is shiny and wonderful and successful. Yeah. But it wasn't always that way. And I was reading one of the backs of one of your books this morning. I knew you described your childhood and upbringing as, as you being dealt the all-time dysfunctional poker hand yeah. in life. And, but at what stage did you start? Did it, there must have been a turning point. There must have been, because the person you are now, yeah. were you always like this? Were you like this in school or was there a turning point? Um, I think everyone's got a turning point in their mm. life. I mean, I, you, know, you don't become negative. Um, life's too short to get bitter. The upset from football um, ages ago, you know, was uh, a huge setback. But what do you do? Do you sit there and ponder for the rest of your life or do you get off your, your butt and do something about it? Because that was all it? you wanted to be. I, I was obsessed with football. Yeah. And, and, you know, having the time at Rangers when I did was fantastic. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about crying over spilt milk. You know, I'm too busy looking for the next cow. And, you know, I, I motivate individuals beyond belief. And that shows. But, you know, there's a price to pay for that because we're cooking at that level. And not everybody makes it at that level. So, you know, if I was flipping a burger and dressing a Caesar salad, then I'd be the happiest chef in the world. But mm. I haven't chosen to play at that level. I want to go to the very, very top. So I suppose what keeps me going is um, constant, constant pressure. And, you know, I thrive on that. Mm. So when, when you went to Oxford, isn't it, was it an apprentice you went to Oxford? Yeah, I was a YTS. It wasn't as glamorous as an apprentice today. A YTS was the youth training scheme yeah. introduced okay. back and in then, the early 80s at 25 quid a week. Then there was, there was range as well. We, I mean, did you have an interest in cooking even then? No, not at all. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in a, on a council estate in Stratford avon So we had, you know, ham hock soup to bread and butter pudding. And, you know, you didn't have a starter. Or so what, you your first your tea, you real introduction would be what, 18, 19? Um, that's quite 19, late, isn't it? It was quite late. But I made up for it in a way that, you know, having worked with someone like Marco Pierre White and spent three years there, the Rue Brothers, um, and then went off to France and sort of almost became French. I ignored my, uh, my friends and family for three years and just sort of, yeah, just embedded myself into the country that was Was that all obsessed. recovering from it, it the disappointment of the football failing? Cross, cross therapy and cross hiding and cross mm. insecurity, really. Um, and but at the way, same time, best thing that ever happened. Yeah, but you know, I, 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 here you were in Paris, um, 100 quid a week, accommodation 125 quid a week, um, up to my eyeballs in debt. But I wasn't interested in the debt because I was learning so much and I was becoming so excited, like a sort of volcano about to erupt in terms of what I was being given. And that's the most fascinating thing about you know, cooking today. Even now at the age of 40, with 12 ministry styles across the board and 1,300 um, members of staff, you know, we're still learning. Even last night, we still tweaked stuff. And I pulled Paul aside after service and said, look, you know, the emulsion on the tagliatelle um, 
fantastic but slightly grainy. You know, tomorrow we've got to do it lighter and better. So, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's no script for cooking. Mm. It's live and there's never two days the same. You, you, 